Welcome to this model on pioneering digital health on prescription digital therapeutics in Germany. My name is Monika Rimmele. I'm managing director of DIGA Factory, which is a joint venture of five companies uh, in Germany, in Berlin. And we are supporting companies that bring digital health solutions, innovations to the German market with the aim to get reimbursement for these solutions. I personally am a political scientist. I uh, used to work for Siemens Healthineers, last in a, in a global function as head of digital transformation, and I joined uh, Diga Factory in September last year. In this model, I will tell you about Digas in Germany, or digital health solutions in Germany. First, looking at the global context, digital health in Germany, the different ways you have to list a digital health solutions in Germany, what is a DIGA, and conclusions we can draw from that. So globally, digital therapeutics are on the rise. A digital therapeutic delivers medical intervention directly to patients using evidence-based, clinically evaluated, high-quality software to treat, manage, and prevent a broad spectrum of diseases and disorders. They are used independently or in concert with medication, devices, sensors, or other therapies to optimize patient care and health outcomes. At the moment, we see three clusters of digital therapeutics. One is chronic diseases, for example, diabetic solutions, hypertension, respiratory problems, mental health apps for depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, HDH, ADHD, addictive disorders, but also neurological disorders and therapies for that are on the rise. The market size already nowadays is quite substantial with 4.2 billion euro dollars in 2021. But interesting here is that the expected annual growth rate is 26% per year for the years 2022 until 2030. This growth was probably also um, accelerated by COVID, by the pandemic, uh, but nonetheless, it also treats or goes into other trends like patient empowerment and uh, also the rising uh, need or demand of patients to be more included in their therapy. On the slide, you see many uh, different digital uh, therapeutics companies that um, yeah, are already on the market with several solutions and I'm sure much more will come. If we look at digital health solutions in Germany, of course, digital therapeutic as a global trend also has a local equivalent in, in Germany. And here we see a lot of health and wellness apps that are helping with a healthy lifestyle and the prevention of diseases. They are freely available in the App Store or in, in Google Play, and uh, some are for free, for others you might have to pay. There is no reimbursement by health insurances in Germany for these health and wellness apps. There's no strict regulation and there is no need for a clinical study or medical evidence. They are, of course, uh, they have to follow European data protection regulation, the GDPR, as all um, the software in, in the European Union. As a next cluster, you see, or we can say we have medical products, software that are licensed, registered as a medical product. They are for treatment of diseases, but also for prevention. Some of them are freely available and others are prescribed by doctors. Those that are prescribed by doctors also get reimbursement by health insurances. There's strict regulation that you have to follow to become a medical product. You have to follow the European medical device regulation and you need a CE certification of class one or two A or B which also includes that you have to do a quality management uh, system and you have to have an in information security management system. And you have to do a clinical study to prove the medical benefit to get the medical device certification. So here you still have to follow the GDPR, but additionally you have to fulfill requirements for MDR and CE certification. Now the DIGA is the next step that is only for the treatment of diseases and they are only prescribed by doctors. They are reimbursed by all health insurances in Germany or by all statutory health insurances in Germany, which uh, is around 90% of the population. And um, 
Additionally to the GDPR and the European uh, Medical Device Regulation, the CE certification, you also have to fulfill the requirements of the DIGA regulation to be listed as a DIGA. You also need to have a clinical study to prove the medical outcome or the medical benefit of your solution. So what is a DIGA? DIGAs were launched in Germany in December 2019 by law and they are just German for digital health apps in German Digitale Gesundheitsanwendung. DIGAs are software-based medical devices of a low-risk class. They have to have a legal CE certification. They are used for the detection, monitoring, treatment and elevation of diseases and they cannot include telemedicine elements. They also cannot be primarily for prevention. They really have to be focused on the treatment of a disease. And their medical purpose must be achieved through digital functions. They cannot be, as I said, telemedicine functions or something. It really must be the digital function in the DIGA proving or improving the medical condition. And they can only be used by the patients or at the most the patient and the provider, but they cannot be used for doctor-doctor interaction. Currently we have three DIGA focused topics or topic clusters. Uh, one is mental health, probably also uh, accelerated by uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic. Mental health uh, was very much in demand, it was possible or it was impossible to see doctors. So the depression, anxiety, panic attacks, burnout, etc. Then another focus is chronic diseases like diabetes and respiratory problems and uh, back pain or, or other musculoskeletal uh, health problems. At the moment we have 41 DIGAs listed in Germany. That might change already next month, but uh, in February 2023 we have 41 DIGAs listed and 26 are provisionals and 15 are permanent. What is provisional and what is permanent uh, we come to at a later stage. Reimbursement for a digital health app I think is, is quite high. Um, so in the first year when you're provisional, when you can set your own price, the average price for a DIGA is 444 euros for 90 days. So if there's a follow-up prescription for another 90 days, it's the same amount that the statutory health insurance is paying. And for the permanently listed DIGAs, the average price per 90 days is 215 uh, euros. There are around 200,000 200, prescriptions at the moment and uh, we can also see here and we look at that a bit later that the pace is accelerating and the number is increasing. On the slide you see logos of several DIGAs. Um, there are more, you can see these are not 41, uh, but I wanted to include some of uh, the DIGAs so you might also be interested in looking them up later. So how do you become a DIGA? What do you have to do to get that listing? There are two ways. We have the DIGA fast track where you do the clinical study during the listing process. That means you develop your product, you do the CE certificate of the product, you fulfill the DIGA requirements of course, and you do a pre-study, which is a data analysis. Normally it's quite small. It has to be for as long as you want the DIGA listed. At the moment that's 90 days. And once you have these information together, you can apply for provisional listing with the respective um, office or authority, which is called BFARM. And uh, then BFARM has three months to decide whether this digital app, this digital health app fulfills the DIGA requirements. If it does and you have a positive BFARM decision, then you have 12 months in which you are listed provisionally which means that you already get reimbursement, uh, you already have patients using your apps, and you still have to fulfill or you have to prove the medical purpose of your product uh, or prove the medical benefit with a study, which is a small RCT study, which has to be done in Germany, and it has to be done within these 12 months. So at the end of the 12 months, you apply for permanent listing, and there you have to prove that the defined medical benefit and endpoints is reached and that the DIGA fulfills 
its medical purpose and is a benefit for the care of the patient. On that, BFARM also has a three month to decide and after this positive BFARM decision, then you're permanently listed and you have to go into sales negotiation or price negotiations with the German statutory health insurance because these health insurances will pay for the DIGA. You can also do uh, or you can already, or you can also try for permanent listing um, directly. So you develop, you do the CE certification, you already do your study, an RCT in Germany, and then once you have done that, you hand in your product, and then BFAM decides again, and you might already get a, a permanent uh, DIGA listing. Generally, what we advise our partners and clients is to go for the provisional listing. It gives you more time. The study, especially for a small startup, is, is still complicated. So go for the provisional listing. It has less requirements. You have a good case. You show some uh, literature evidence. You get the positive BFARM decision. Then you can set the price for your DIGA for yourself or by yourself for one year and then as we've seen before, in the second year or after permanent listing, prices are normally lower. So it's also useful for you in the beginning where you have less of, um, uh, of prescriptions to, to have a higher price and thereby also finance your study. If we look at the current DIGAs that are already listed and by what diseases uh, or what diseases they treat, we see a big focus on mental health with 18 apps, 18 out of 21. Uh, uh, another big focus or the next big focus with five apps is diseases of the nervous system. And then we also have musculoskeletal system I mentioned. We have two for, for um, ear diseases like tinnitus. Um, we have one for digestive system and uh, metabolic diseases for example as well. What we can see when we look at these DIGAs is that 81% of them proved a medical benefit. So once you decide for your DIGA and talk about the medical purpose you will fulfill, you need to either have a medical benefit or a positive effect on care. Um, and most of the apps prove a medical benefit. 17% prove a medical benefit and a positive effect on care. And only 2% of the DIGAs have only the positive effect on care proven. Also what we see when we look at the DIGAS is that we have some companies that are quite successful in launching DIGAS and we have two, Gaia and Hello Better that have already listed six DIGAS and we have SelfAP that has listed four DIGAS. So um, we have these three big companies and then 25 other vendors that have DIGAS on the market. Um, Hello Better and Gaia Health focus on um, all three of them have a strong mental health focus. Um, self ap only focuses on mental health. Um, the others uh, also include some other diseases. If we look at the prescription of DIGAs and how they developed, um, of course, once the first DIGA was, um, was certified in September 2020, um, and now, as I said, the pace accelerated with uh, accepted DIGAs. So of course, there's a higher number of prescription in the second year now that we have DIGAs. Um, and not just because we have more, but also because the ones on the market had time to become a bit known, to have better sales structures and just to get more prescriptions. And that we can really see also if we look at the top five of DIGAs, which by themselves, are 66% of all prescriptions. And there uh, you see the five companies on the slide. We have Zanadio, which uh, has around 28,000 prescriptions, and it's for adipositas, or it's treating adipositas. Vivira, which is uh, an adiga for back pain, which treats around, or which has 27,000 uh, prescriptions. Calmeda, which is tinnitus, um, which has another 27,000 prescriptions. Somnio, which treats uh, insomnia, uh, has around 16,000 prescriptions. And MSense, which is a DIGA for migraine or the treatment of migraine, has around 12,000 prescriptions. And if we look who prescribes DIGAs, 
we have two ways. We have physicians or uh, psychotherapists uh, who can prescribe a DIGA or health insurances. Health insurances at the moment only prescribe DIGAs by 11%, so the majority, 89%, is prescribed by physicians. And if we look at these physicians, we can say that 37% are prescribed by family doctors. Uh, so also, again, the majority, and that's also where um, the DIGA um, vendors, the DIGA companies are focusing with their sales strategies. So coming to the end and, and our conclusions of uh, working for yeah, over two years now with DIGA providers, um, I know in digital health, it's really hard to, to calculate a business case and come up with a return on invest. So the DIGA case gives you the ability to calculate a business case because you have Germany and you have fixed reimbursement. Once you're re registered, once you're listed as DIGA, the health insurance has to pay for your prescription. I think that's a big advantage and you can rest or you can really calculate a, a business case. You have a defined submission and assessment process. It's very clear what you have to do to become a DIGA. You have to be a medical product. You have to have the CE certification. You have to fulfill the DIGA requirements that are listed in the DIGA regulation. It's very clear. It's transparent. It's accessible online. Some of the documents, especially the newest versions, are only in German, um, but with yeah, translation tools and uh, German uh, help that is, uh, I think, a hurdle you can pass. Um, we also see that other European countries are following Germany's pioneering approach. Uh, France here is the furthest. Um, they are very close to the German legislation um, and also other European states, even the European Union itself, is uh, thinking of having a EU-wide uh, DIGA approach, which of course would still be beneficial if you have the DIGA listing in Germany, you're in the first market, but you have the possibility to expand to the whole of the European Union. Nonetheless, you also have a high quality medical product that can be launched above or beyond Europe. Um, it does not need to stay in the European Union. Of course, in other countries and other markets, you have to find reimbursement possibilities, but we also see the first DIGA from Germany that, is, um, that got FDA approval and is now entering the US market. So you have a high quality medical product, use it elsewhere. Um, very important for DIGAS is all aspects need to fit together. You need to define a medical, product, a medical purpose with clear medical outcomes. You need to prove that in the study and to prove that in the study, the DIGA features really need to be selected carefully so you can also prove that clinical outcome. So in our experience, it's not recommendable to do these split and then just pull it all together. You need to do it from one strategy, include all aspects and then get going. Also what we saw and what is changing is that DIGA manufacturers, they think about all the things they have to do to launch a DIGA and fulfill all the steps. And then finally, they have the approval of the B-Farm and they're listed as a DIGA. But that does not sell anything. You still need to have a go-to-market strategy. You need to have a sales strategy to make sure that the DIGA is also prescribed. Um, some doctors yet don't even know about it. Some doctors are resistant. Some patients perhaps are resistant. So it's good to have a go-to-market strategy to really move on from day one, from day one of your listing and make the most of your one year that you have where you set the price yourself and then um, get into permanent listing. These uh, were the insights on DIGA. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me or all the other professors uh, that are teaching that course. Thank you.